Let's please turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 7, and uh, where we are picking up our study in the flood of Noah. And we are doing a PowerPoint presentation today, so much of it I'm going to be looking over at the screen and trying to read. And, and, and actually, this PowerPoint presentation, and for those that are listening on tape, we'll still be posting this on tape, but you won't be getting much out of the study because you won't be able to see the animations and the, and the slides. But if you contact us at the webpage at www.calvarypo.org, uh, and then order the DVD that we're going to be producing from this uh, study and next week's study. This study is really going to be going through uh, the, from the fountains of the great deep bursting up causing global flood and just looking at how did the whole world get flooded. And then next week we're going to be looking at where did the water go. The two great questions of the flood of Noah are, you know, as we sit here on a dry earth with almost 30,000 foot mountains and, and almost 30,000 foot deep ocean trenches. Where did all the water come from to flood? And where did the water go? Well, we hope to answer those two questions in the next two weeks. Today, we're gonna to emphasize where did the water come from to flood the entire earth? Here we, we are studying a Bible, considered the word of God that Jesus even referenced the flood of Noah in his teaching to his disciples. We, we believe that Jesus is God incarnate. He's the, he's the Word of God. He's all-knowing, all-powerful, poured into a human body to share with us the truths of, his, uh, of God and who, reveal who God is. Jesus referred to the flood of Noah as an actual fact. And so that means that if the whole world wasn't flooded, then we've got a problem with everything about our faith. We shouldn't be here wasting our time if the earth wasn't flooded. And and this, the, one of my motivations, because this has been a passion of mine for 30 years of being a Christian to understand this, because our children, when we teach them and they grow up and they go to the colleges and universities and they get t fed the line of evolutionary geology and they don't have an understanding of the flood of Noah, their, their faith can be challenged in, do I really believe this Noah account? If I have to throw out the Noah flood account, then do I have to throw out the Jesus account? Do I have to throw out the parting of the Red Sea? Is this a fable? Are my parents believing a fable? And, and therefore, some of this is going to be scientific today, and you're going to go, boy, Kevin, you know, you lost me out in the parking lot. <laughs> I shouldn't have come today. I'm going to just encourage you, just avoid those kind of feelings because you should be, you should be equipped to at least know, I know somebody that has an answer for when your children question or your neighbor questions that you can take them to something that will increase their faith because the enemy is trying to destroy the faith. And you can, with complete biblical and scientific assurance, be, be totally at peace with a global flood. Uh, and one of the biggest reasons is because there are seashell fossils on the top of every single mountain on this earth. And that's just a simple fact. And so it's easy to, just by that fact, it's easy to believe there was a global flood. But how? How did it happen? Flood of Noah, it's a teaching that's based on the literal view of the Genesis account. And we're going to be emphasizing that and have been in our study up till now. It's also um, flood being global, cataclysmic event. Some people have tried to twist the Genesis account to say, well, it was just a local flood where people were in Mesopotamia area. It was just where Noah and his family were. The rest of the earth didn't get flooded. It was just a local flood right there. Uh, I disagree. The Bible disagrees. Jesus disagrees. Peter disagrees. Everybody died. And not just everybody, every creeping thing, every bird, everything with breath in its mouth died according to the biblical, biblical account. Again, if it wasn't global, the Bible is not the truth. It, you can't interpret it different. <laughs> it's, it says everything died. Dr. Walt Brown is the author of the hydroplate theory. This is a book, many of you have seen it. We've sold dozens and dozens over the years. This is Dr. Walt Brown's seventh edition of the book. Um, the eighth edition, preliminary eighth edition, is uh, on his website at creationscience.com. And he, um, uh, and it will be available as soon as he, as soon as the seventh edition sells out, then he's gonna pull the web version off and sell uh, the eighth edition as a hard copy, but you can go to the updated version of his hydroplate theory on the website. It's very updated since this book has come out because many discoveries of comets, asteroids, etc., even asteroid discoveries just three weeks ago 
have affected uh, and completely going along with the hydroplate theory. For those that have never heard uh, you know, his bio, he was a West Point Army officer, graduated from West Point. Uh, he became an Army Ranger officer. Uh, then he was the very first, it was the, the Army, <laughs> the, the, for the very first time, the Army sponsored one of their officers to go get a doctorate. Walt Brown was the very first person in the history of the country's military service of the Army, where the Army sent somebody to go get a doctorate, and they sent him to MIT to go get a doctorate. And MIT is arguably uh, the most prestigious scientific uh, higher education place in the world. And so in other words, you, you, have, to, you have to know something to get there, and, and, and Dr. Brown's credentials, scientific credentials, where he got a doctorate in mechanical engineering at MIT, uh, qualify him to make some of the, the statements that he does in his book. And so uh, he was then, uh, the Air Force wanted his talents, his educational talents, uh, to be at the Air Force Academy. So the Air Force pulled him out of the Army and he, and he retired from the Air Force as an Air, Air Force Academy professor. And then he left the Air Force because he wanted to devote full time researching his belief of how the flood occurred. And that research has been going on now for over 20 years since he retired. And it is completely, uh, his theory is being validated every day by the discoveries which are all supporting predictions and other anticipations of the hydroplate theory. This is getting back to our Genesis 1-2, at laying the back, how was the earth created? For those that have been following us in Genesis, this is a quick review. In Genesis 1-2, it says the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So there was the, the earth was, had mantle, and it says that the whole world was covered, the Spirit of God was, was hovering over the face of the waters of the earth. At creation, the earth was solid, covered by water. That's what the Bible tells us in Genesis 1-2. And then in Genesis 1-6, uh, it says, and God said, let there be an expanse. And that just kind of pops in there because that's what God said. It, he said, let there be an expanse, and this is the New American Standard Version instead of uh, the King James, which says firmament, because it really means an expanse. And Walt Brown, uh, for reasons we discussed in our study earlier, and you can go listen to our earlier study where we got in detail about why, that expanse means the crust of the earth a 10 mile thick crust. Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters and God made the expanse and separated the waters which were below the expanse from the waters which were above the expanse and it was so. Uh, I, I really completely agree with Dr. Brown looking at all of his reasoning. It's a couple, three pages in his book, Reasoning, of why the expanse was the crust being put in between the waters so that there was still, the earth is still covered with water, but the 